We have uh, some wonderful guests that are with us here. I thought I saw Dan there crying or something. All right. Uh, uh, we're going to wait now. Introduce both of you all together. Amen. I introduce both, both of you together. All right. So um, my friend and my brother is here all the way from Houston, Texas. You all know him. Uh, I'm going to give him a formal inv invitation. You all know him as, well, many, many people know him as Bishop Roderick Johnson of the New Beginnings Church in Houston, Texas. Uh, he's, he's here with us on today. Actually going to uh, preach today, give me the opportunity just to receive today. Amen. He's not just a preacher we brought in the city. Uh, this, is, this is a family member, a friend, and we love him uh, uh, dearly. I want to show you the heart of, of the people that I serve with, my friends across the country. Uh, Y'all know Pastor Godby, who preaches uh, for us, often been coming preaching for me for years. Just a great friend. Uh, his, his mama died. His mama died last week. And we did not have the opportunity to get to the funeral. That's what friends do. We make sacrifices and go and to be with one another when we're hurting. And uh, uh, what we decided we were going to do is all the brothers from all over the country were going to come into Knoxville. We're going to get into uh, the suburban. And we're going to North Carolina to be with our friend for the next day or so. Just to be with him and let him know we love him. That's the type of man that's about to preach for you on today type of man who loves his friends that will come all the way from Houston, Texas to be with us and then travel to Durham, Raleigh, uh, North Carolina just to be with a broken man. So that's who you're about to uh, to hear preach uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you put your hands together, stand to your feet and give God praise for my friend, for my brother, Bishop Roderick Johnson, Houston, Texas. New Beginnings Church Supernatural Church. Remain standing. Come on, man. Let's preach and uh, let's see some bodies get, get healed and some people get saved and some, some minds get regulated. God will get, get regulated. God bless you, man. Come on, you can do better than it. Thank God for the gift to Pastor Darrell Arnold. Thank you for your kindness. I, um, I actually came for more than just preaching. I really didn't come to preach. He offered me to preach. After the Lord told me that uh, my family and I, we take a vacation, so we rolled down to Miami. My wife been telling me what the Lord said for three years, but uh, I got some real brothers in the room who know sometimes you don't realize your best weapon is beside you until you go through some storms together. And uh, let me take time to tickle my own rib bone. Say, hey, baby, hey. I ain't going to be long because I can't stay away from alone. Uh, but, and I got two girls, my girls with me. But we actually came uh, because we were going on vacation. And the Lord told me, I thought this was, I, I thought he did it because it was close. Uh, that we were going to do this this time because it was close. But it's really not close. It's just it's time. Uh, I actually came to unite with OBC. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me get into this word that we're going to give. Uh, turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And uh, while you're getting there, let me tell you this. Uh, it's going to sound like I'm talking about Christmas, but I'm really not. Uh, but uh, about eight years ago, 2009 years ago, about 2006, I met a couple of brothers, Ronald Godby and Daryl Arnold, and when I met them, we did Gospel Bowl, and I just came to see Gospel Bowl. I didn't preach or nothing. At the end, we all hung out, and uh, I told them I wanted them to come down with me to Houston in April. They agreed and brought five other brothers with them. And at the time, I had as our church van a little uh, Chrysler minivan. And uh, I, I went to pick them up in it. And uh, he tells this story a little differently than I. But, but you know when you have, uh, if any of you are really 
you use your car a lot. You know, there are some things that you just put in the seat. You don't think about it. And I was receiving them, and I didn't think about it. And uh, I had a bucket in there because I had been doing some work around the church. And I had a, a cup in there because I had been drinking some stuff. And seven, because <laughs> I had been feeding somebody. But anyway, the car was full of stuff, y'all. Y'all, y'all sit down. I'm not good at that church stuff. I ain't going to be, I, 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 don't even, I don't even know when I'm going to start reading this text. I just got to get set up. <laughs> uh, and, and so so watch this. I, I, I put all these brothers in, in the minivan, right, and they got to put their bags in. And I didn't realize I had so much junk with me. So I started talking about this. Hey, just scoot that over and uh, move that in. So seven of us in a minivan and uh when Crystal decided that I was, I was going to bring Crystal down, my wife was in charge of that. And, you know, women do things with a little better touch. So when Crystal got picked up, she didn't get picked up in a minivan. They picked, up her, picked her up in a limo. All of a sudden, now the van was a problem. Man, uh, Crystal got picked up in a limo I heard about, it, and I got picked up in that minivan. I, I'm telling you right now, you come in a minivan again, I will not get in. And... Uh, as time went on, I would make sure every time he came, I made sure he was in a good hotel and I had a good car to pick him up in because he taught me a lesson I want to share with you, and that's how to receive a gift. Watch this. Here it is, James chapter 1, verse 17. Here it is. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, within whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, watch this, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of weakness and receive with meekness the implanted word of which is able to save your souls. Can you help me look around you and say, neighbor, today we're going to learn how to recognize, receive, and release a gift. Now listen to this. James, if you, those of you who have been in church a while, you've read a whole lot of what James says in chapter 1, and it seems like a rambling on of thoughts. He starts off talking about to the brothers who scattered abroad, and then he starts talking about count it all joy. He leaves count it all joy and starts talking about, well, when you get through counting it all joy, if you need understanding, then ask God who gives it liberally. He'll leave there saying, look, after you get that, if you want to know what happened to you, if you get tempted, it ain't because God tempted you. And then all of a sudden he gets to verse 17 and says, every good and perfect gift comes from God above. It looks like he's randomly talking. You know, my, my baby would have caught him and said, you so random, but I guess. But, but, but the truth is the, the whole matter was about James had put his thesis in the end of the statement. What he was really trying to show us is that when you really understand the power of the word of God, you can handle stuff like other folk couldn't handle it. Check this out. When we read the word scattered, a lot of times we think it means that just because they were under persecution that they had problems. A whole lot of y'all talking about, yeah, I know what it's like to be scattered. No, here's the truth. There are sometimes God will allow you to go through pressures, not because he wants to expose your problems, but because he wants to expand your life. Check this out. When you read, he talks to the scattered brothers. The reason is because he was one of the chief leaders at the church in Jerusalem. And Acts 12 says that Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Y'all remember that? He killed James, and when he saw it please the people, the Bible says he brought Peter along also, and he put Peter in jail. But you know our God, he's a show-off, huh? He let Peter get hemmed up. He let him get tied up. He let him put bars in front of him. He let put guards around him, tied him to the guards, and then God delivered him. I, I wish I could talk to somebody in here who you know you've been tied up, you've been locked up, you've been looked over, but God's got you in that spot because he knows he's about to scatter you. Somebody shouts scattering here. Scattering is not just being perplexed with problems. Scattering is God allowing you to move on because some of the stuff you facing is pushing you out of your extraordinary. It's pushing you out of what's regular. It's pushing you out of what's convenient to take you to what you've never been to before. If you read the end of Acts chapter 12, guess what happened? Herod died and the word of God grew was the last verse. 
And I'm trying to tell you there's some stuff you've been pushed under in 2015. You thought it was there to kill you. It was really to push you so you could grow. It was there to push you so you would know that the God we serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you could ask or think. I wish I had two or three folk in here who knew that this was a hell of a year because God had a hell of a thing for you to do in 2016. They thought they were going to ruin Knoxville, but they put them on the map because gang violence is about to end because we've been scattered. Check it out. Check it out. He says every good and perfect gift comes from God above. Look at this. When you've been scattered, you learn to take this word differently because, you see, when you got the word and you've been scattered, you know it works. You, you, you know it's powerful. You know it'll keep you. I wish I had two or three, four. You had some stuff go on like, like uh, Eldale. You had some hellos. Some folk you thought you were going to be with wasn't with you no more. You thought you, you, you thought you had a gang full of folk and you end up by yourself. But how many of y'all know this word will keep you when you're by yourself? You've been weak. This word will keep you when you're weak. So watch this. James says when you got a right perspective, you got the word working in you, you got to realize that you can count it all joy. Because sometimes when it looks like you're in a storm, it's really you experiencing God showing you the power of his word. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Check him out. James finally says every good and perfect gift comes from a God, from above, the Father of light in whom there's no variation of change. And look, that's important because whatever God reveals in his word for one of us, once it's revealed, it's available to all of us. Can you please help me touch your neighbor and say, you could have it too. Now, now watch, watch, watch. Here's the problem. Most of us won't use the word properly because we don't recognize what we have. Sort of reminds me of the little boy. This little boy got ready for Christmas. He said, Mama, I want a cell phone. I want a laptop. I, I want some games. I, 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 me and my boys, we play Xbox together. I, I want some of them games. And, and when, when Christmas came around, he looked under the tree, and all he got was the phone. He started crying. He's like, Mama. I told you I wanted a laptop. I told you I wanted a phone. I told you I wanted some game. And all you got was my phone. What happened to the rest of my stuff? He, she said, baby, the only problem is you don't know what you got. Because I got apps for everything you want. I didn't want you to have to carry all that stuff around. So I put it in the phone so you could have everything. And here it is. There are a whole lot of you looking for healing. You're looking for help. You're looking for hope. And you're trying to find it in friends who fake and phony. You're trying to find it in jobs that can't help you. But if you would just turn to this word, everything you need is in it. Can you please look at your neighbor and tell him you got it? That same word says you have everything you need for life and godliness. You got to learn how to recognize it. Recognizing means you got to spend time with it. So little boy started working with it, and he found out he could play games. They they start playing games together. Him and his boys was having fun. He was in places he shouldn't have been in because he had something he knew was bigger than he thought. Check that. You got to recognize what you got. You got the word of God. Now here here's the power. Most of us have been in church, and this has been a legal book. It, it's been able to whip our tails. But the truth is, this is a life book. And what it's designed to do is so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know if your life dry now, but if you're getting this word, he's got joy everlasting. If you're getting this word, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you, but I give you a peace that the world can't take away. I wish my grandma was here because y'all too churchy for me. She said, this joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. I may not have a job, I may not have a car, but when I get through, I got to shout because the God I serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what I can ask or say. You better recognize what you have. You got some sleepless nights. Don't you take another night wheel. Get in this word and he'll put you to sleep at night. Not because you're bored, but he'll give you a peace that even in the midst of the storm, you can rest on him. Now watch this. Once you recognize it, you got to realize how to receive it. Notice this key word. James says it is the implanted word. Which means somebody's got to work on it. Implanted, kind of strange word. So, I, I live in Houston. Michael DeBakey is a heart surgeon who discovered how to make 
heart implants work. Sometimes to have an implant, you got to have a cut. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to get it. See, many of us, our hearts have been broken by the world. And we need a transplant. We don't need no more world. We need some words. So what God has to do is he's got to bring a cut. What y'all experienced with gang violence was God cutting you open. Because there's a whole lot of young men working around here who think the world's got everything. But we want to teach them there's a way where you don't have to look over your shoulder. You can have exceedingly and abundantly. You can ride in business and be boss, not because you got a name out on the street, but because you got a God who says to you, I'm able to do more than anything or anybody else. So you got to learn how to receive. Let, 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 let me tell you, my wife has really helped me with a lot of my preaching lately, and yesterday was no different. I got with Pastor Arno, and when Pastor Arno comes to my city, I don't like him to spend no money. I don't. I can spend nothing. When I go to his city, I try and go to the store without him because I don't want him to spend nothing on me. And my wife said, it's funny because you preach, give, and it shall be given. But you live like you don't need to give. Oh, some of y'all need to slow down. Because you're doing all you need to do. You're sowing in church. You got your first fruit. You got, but every time God gets ready to send somebody to sow back into you. Oh, that's all right. I'm waiting on the Lord. And the Lord said, fool, I've already done it. I said, not God is going to give into your bosom, but men is going to give into your bosom. And you got to learn how to receive. Now, watch this. Watch this. The first thing you learn about receiving is be grateful. <laughs> the problem with us is when we receive, we like to do this. In kingdom, you got to change your, and any of y'all remember them old TVs? The one before the remote. I'm kind of telling my age. But they used to have one with a knob at the top. I think it said UHF. And the one at the bottom said VHF. And uh, usually that one at the bottom, it always gave you problems because they didn't have good signal. It was like AM radio, you know what I mean? So, so you would have to kind of play with the knob, but you'd also have to work on the antenna. Because if the antenna wasn't in the right direction, you wouldn't receive no signal. And because many of you got your antenna in the wrong position, you, you're trying to get from people. You're trying to get over. You're trying to get out. But you, you got to put your antenna in the right position. If you learn to give up a praise, the same God who gets your praise will release a blessing in your direction. Some of y'all need to practice. I can tell the way you got your arms folded, your head all down. You got to learn how to practice giving them thanks in all things. You got to learn how to practice saying, well, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I thank you because I believe your word. Because the promise is that all things work together for good to them that anybody in here has got your receiver up. Y'all go to the club, they tell you raise your hand in the air like you just don't care. If you knew the power of your praise, your hands would stay up. They think you were crazy when you say, I I'm reaching out for blessing. I'm looking for over. You better learn how to receive. Learn to tell him thank you. I don't know if I got a job or not. Thank you. Because if there's a need, you already said you were going to supply it. Thank you. I'm still getting an unemployment check, but the check ain't enough. But thank you. Got food on the table. Got to learn how to receive. Now, watch verse 19. Because he's going to tell us how to receive this implanted word. First, he says, be swift. To hear. Watch this, watch this. There's a reason because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're gonna get this implanted word to take root in your life, you gotta get in a place where you're hearing it all the time. And you gotta tune your channel in because a lot of times you can get some things that will try and mess with your frequency. 
Uh huh. You get a word about faith. Then somebody tell me, child, I don't know. I tried that. It ain't working. I don't know what you tried, but I believe that the promises of God are yes and amen. And what I want to thank you, Lord. They ain't caught it yet. Thank you. I don't know what, what happened over there in that house. Thank you. See, a whole lot of y'all receiving what other folks said, but you don't know what they went through in the night. I, I don't know. Ooh, this is in my spirit. Let me help you. There are a couple of y'all who need to hear this. You've been sad because you prayed for somebody, and the prayer didn't look like it went through. It was because you didn't know what went on afterwards. Uh-huh. You asked the Lord to heal a body because they were diabetic. Uh-huh. And you healed them and you believed. What you didn't know is when you went to sleep, they ate all the candy they could. It wasn't your prayer life wasn't working. It was because they didn't line up with what God said afterwards. Get back in your prayer position and receive your power. You are able to do exceedingly. Receive. You got to be quick to hear word. You got to be ready to, instead of talking about what's wrong in your life, you better keep asking, what is God saying to get right? I, I, I don't want to hear about what's broke. I want to know what he's fixing. Because if he's fixing it, I want it fixed in my life. Receive. You got to be quick to hear. Watch this. A lot of us quick to hear. The problem is we slow to speak. And so, I mean, we quick to speak. But he says be slow to speak. And here's why. Because your mouth can cancel out what you hear. Y'all want to act churchy. That's all right. You in here and you see miracles happen. You've been in the miracle line. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Laid on the floor, got up, felt delivered, and went out and got the same problems when you left. Because after you received it, you start talking to people who didn't know about it. And they start talking to you back into what God delivered you out of. Oh, Lord have mercy. Touch your name and tell you, you got to learn how to cover your mouth. Because some stuff ain't worth everybody hearing. Some folks can't take your vision. Some people can't take your course of destiny. Some people don't understand the language you talk. But you got to understand the language of the kingdom is always more. Greater. Watch this. You got to receive. You got to be slow to speak, quick to hear. Watch. I didn't recognize this until I started really working on my mouth. Because... Uh, I was preaching Ephesians 4, and he says, all your words need to be gracious. So I, I started checking some stuff out, and uh, I'm going to be, can I be transparent? Be all right? All right, here, here's true. All right, uh, there were times when I would speak over a young man. He's got purpose and destiny. Then I leave. And they bring him up. That's a bad little somebody. Watch this. I spoke it right in the beginning. But because I didn't discipline my mouth, what I released in the end canceled out what I spoke in the beginning. Uh-huh. Some of y'all, when you raise your money, you said, I'll never be broke again. First thing your mind went to is, what's in your pocketbook? You ain't going to be broke again, not because of what's in your pocketbook, because there's a word in front of you. And all you got to do, how many of y'all remember Pac-Man? Uh-huh. In, in all four corners, Pac-Man had what was called power pellets. He'd be, wah, 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 wah. But when he really got in trouble, he would get in the corner. And find a power pillar. I don't know who I'm talking to, but right now, it look like you just want more, 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 more. All you heard this morning was one more, more, more. But I came to tell you, you in the corner because there's a power pellet waiting on you. Because God has already said whatever you need, I will supply. I feel a shout in my spirit. I'm trying to act right. But can you high five somebody and tell them, neighbor, I need to tell you. So watch what you say. Mm, mm, mm. Watch this, watch this. Say you got to learn how to receive. You got to be swift to hear, slow to speak. Watch this next one. You got to be slow to wrath. 
Man, listen to me. A whole lot of you who have surplanted the word that was implanted because of anger. Ooh, Lord. I said it. I'm going to say it slow. You have rooted up what God spoke in your life because you let anger fester and anger has roots Ooh, that will pluck up the word. Uh-huh, I, I, I love everybody. Mm -hmm. But anger make you with your loving self. Not help people you know need help. Anger so cold, it'll make you get back at people for stuff they done forgot about. Anger so cold, it'll make you mad while other folk are happy and then moved on. You better be slow to anger. Because when you get angry... You stop thinking like Jesus. Unless this word is planted in you. How many of I, I, I just show your hand, be quick. Anybody got so mad this year that when somebody slapped you, you slapped them back? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Now, now, look, every, every week, prophet come in and tell me, the chaos is over in your life. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you. But then... When you got somebody coming at you, you forgot the implanted word that say, a slow answer turns away wrath. So with your fast mouth self, you start talking back. And well, what's going to be a discussion end up being a fist fight. Ooh, you don't want to talk to me now. Because your anger got the best of you. You allowed it to, watch this. Matthew 5 says, to turn the other cheek. To bless them that curse you. And watch this. The promise is, and the God who sees in secret, he going to bless you. And we forfeited blessings because of anger. I had to say something. You got fired having to say something. So watch this. Now that you recognize what the gift is, it ain't Legos and it ain't Lambos. It's the word of God, the Legos. Now that you done learned how to receive it with thanksgiving and you've been slow to speak but swift to hear and slow to anger. Watch this. James starts pouring out some stuff. He says, now what you're going to have to do is realize what it's doing is saving your soul. Now, the more words you get, the more your mind changes. Stuff that used to make me mad, Crystal, it don't even make me mad no more because I found out you can't stop me because you hate on me because all you will do is fuel what God doing in me. You will hurt yourself trying to hurt me. Ask Daniel about it. Ask his boys. They tried to put him in the lion's den. They, they didn't get hurt uh, in the fire furnace. They tried to put him in. When they put him in the fire furnace, they didn't hurt Daniel. They got killed. Oh, Lord, you worry about folk who got a death sentence on themselves. Because what God has put in you cannot be stopped by anybody but you. Watch this. He says, it's to the saving of your souls. Now, if you get saved, here's the truth. <laughs> you got some responsibility. To whom much is given, much is required. Here's the responsibility, not to just hear it and let it change you, but let your neighbors know that if it changed you, it can change them. I, I like this. When, when Jesus found Matthew, the Bible says he was at the table. Uh, Y'all want to be churchy. I mean, he was just counting money. No, but tax collectors were known thieves. Hustlers. So let's translate it ebonically. He was at his hustle and Jesus showed up. And Matthew did what hustlers do. He threw a party and didn't invite church folk. But you know them, they show up. He had Slim Thug and the crew sitting down with Jesus talking. And church folks said to him, if he was all that, he'd be with the mayor, 
Not with the Crips and the Bloods. But Jesus said, if you knew who I was, you know why I'm with Crips and Bloods because the well don't need a doctor. <laughs> it's the sick. And for all you uppity folk who wonder why we out in the hood trying to reach the whole world, it's because it ain't the well who need a doctor. It's the sick who need one. And when they get well, they're going to bring some other folk to the doctor. <laughs> so James leaves like this. He said, look, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer. Because if you're a doer, several things got to show up. Y'all go to the end of the chapter with me, and this is how I'm going to leave, because I know y'all ain't used to long preaching, so let me go on and get out of here. <laughs> Watch this. He says, when you really have received the gift, it will show up in how you release it. Look at verse 26. If anyone thinks he is religious with your super saved self, and he doesn't bridle his tongue, he deceives his own heart. You want to talk about how much better you are than every thug around here, but your mouth nasty, negative, you ain't said a word to encourage nobody, everything is condemning, and you talking about you a child of God, Jesus spoke so powerfully that even women who had been with five and six men said, come see a man. Watch it. He said, you got to release it. How am I going to release it? We ought to be able to see it in how you talk. See, if you really receive it, results will show up in your life. Look at the next verse. Pure and undefiled religion before God will do some things. It will help those who are orphans and widows. Oh, I feel sorry for him. I'm praying for the poor. No, put some money in their hands. Woo! Sister Shirley lost her husband. She got five children. When you gonna start babysitting? See, when we really receive the gift of the word, it shows up because we want somebody else's life to be affected by what we do. And listen to this last thing. He said, keep yourself unspotted from the world. Look, if you really receive the gift of the word, It'll show up because even when you get around folk who ain't like you, they'll know something different. <laughs> yes, sir. We so busy trying to change what we look like that we can't help the people we need to. I, 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 I want to I leave by saying this. You did not come in here this morning just because you came to another service. You came to a release party. Because of the word you received this morning, God has expectations for you. He expects for you to re recognize. When you get in trouble, you may not have any medicine about you. But Psalms 107 says he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from their destruction. When I was a little younger, I used to go to funerals and say, doctors have medicine. Lawyers have laws. But all the man of God has is the word. But I didn't grow up now. I learned if I got the word, I got more power than the police with a bazooka. If I got the word, I got more power than the doctor and his medicine. If I got the word, whatever I need, it is supplied. Can I talk to somebody in here? Because you thought you were going to need a job. But I came to tell you, you don't need a job as much as you need a word. Because if you get a word, God is known to change economies. Just because you showed up, how you know that? They tell me a story about Elijah having a little meal and a woman with a little oil. And because she got a word, her meal lasted till the storm was over. I'm telling you, you don't need a word, just any word. But you need the word of God because the promise behind the word of God is before one drop of tittle of my word will fade away, heaven and earth will fade away. I need to talk to you this morning. I know you 
have been down, uh, but I dare you to get this word. Uh, weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy, it comes in the morning. I dare you uh, to stop talking to people and just do what my grandmother said. Uh, have a little talk with Jesus uh, and tell him all about your troubles. Uh, why? Because James said, uh, when we get in trouble, uh, all we got to do is cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a word for you. The word is he will do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think. Whatever you need, my God will. He will supply it. Is there anybody in here that knows he will? Can you touch somebody and testify with me? He's able. He's able. He's able to let me do like David. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can you tell somebody what he's done for you? Because you don't know your testimony will cause somebody to overcome. Since we an overcomers, can you go and tell them they overcame by the word and the blood? Anybody here can end it with me and by their testimony, they overcame. Any overcomers in this room, can you tell your neighbor this word? It really works. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Yes, sir. I need somebody to open up your mouth and declare with me. Can't nobody do your life, Jill? Yes! Out on a hill called Calvary, he paid a price so I can live the abundant life. He paid a price so every day I can praise his name. Glory! Listen, hear me, because there are some of you, you got a lot of stuff under the tree, but today God opened you up to realize the power of this implanted word. Some of you have been coming to this place week in and week out, but while you were coming, that word never took place. Because you wouldn't ki commit yourself to come to this altar and do what we do when we go to surgery. Lay on the table. Tell the truth about it. I need some help. I need some hope. I need a Jadavion. I, I, need, I need some folks who will care enough to cover me. I want to tell y'all this. I'm here this morning because what you saw physically happen in your city happened to me. People who I loved and trusted broke me up, wounded me, left me for dead. I wouldn't answer the phone for six months. Stuff happened. People walked out. My daddy died. People who I really trusted messed me up. And I was ready to give up. But my wife got a call from Knoxville. And my own brother Dobson saw what the enemy was doing and covered me. He never got to talk to me because I wouldn't answer the phone on purpose. 
But he told my wife, if I don't hear from him soon, I'm coming. And I ain't coming by myself. Now here's what's crazy. My wife didn't tell me till after I started talking to him. I just, I started calling him because I realized real people hang with you through your storms. See, James is trying to tell us you can count it joy when you go through stuff because sometimes what you thought was meant to kill you is really God getting ready to show you what you really got with you. So I called and my wife got, she started laughing and I didn't know what was funny. She said, you called just in time because they was on the way down here if they hadn't heard from you. And when I heard that, I realized God's got a whole legion of people who I haven't met who want to help me. And I'm so busy worrying about the folk who hurt me that I don't even realize the gift God gave me. I'm talking to somebody in this room right now. You came in wounded. You came in ready to give up because you were looking for people, places, things, money, cars. You were looking for fame, fortune, all that other stuff. But the greatest gift you could have got was just one word. This word is about to shift your life because every time you get in trouble now, you're going to stop looking for Oprah. You're going to stop looking for Ayana. You're going to start looking for Jesus. And you're going to discover he got a word for every situation, every addiction, every stronghold. He's got the power to release you. I'm going to make three quick pleas. Hear me. If today you've never realized how important the word of God is, you realize this morning you need it. You realize this morning. Because see, a lot of times when we say Jesus, we just think of this guy who existed in the past. But Jesus is quick to be announced as the word of God. So every time you get word, you get more Christ. When you release word, you release, I ain't Jesus, yeah, but the more Jesus you get in, the more you start acting, talking, and licking like him. So today, if you've never done that, if you've never committed to make his word number one in your life, you've never committed to making him your Lord and your Savior, I want you to come to this altar because here, there are people here who want to get you saved because this word is able to save your soul. There's another group of you, you've been saved. But you, you suffered such great hurt and pain that you were coming to church and all it was like, yum, 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 yum. But this morning you realize that the reason you've been so blocked up is because you've been looking for everything else but the word. And now that you've heard the word, the word has begun to minister to you even now. Healing is happening in your heart. Even now your head is being released. Even now your tears are being dried up because my God shall wipe away all your tears. And he ain't waiting till you die. Some of you right now, you thought you were doing God a favor being broke. Can I tell you what the word says? I'm going to cause you to prosper. Where every place your foot touch, it becomes your property. And the day the word liberated you enough to realize you ain't supposed to be in the spot you in. The word has declared God ain't going to do nothing to the earth without talking to his people. If you've been feeling like you can't hear God, you need to be here because there's a word that's saying he'll never leave you without speaking to your heart. He'll never leave you without speaking to your situation. Don't you dare stay like you are. Come on, come on, come on. This is your hour. This is your moment. And here's my last quick. Come on, quick, 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 quick. I'm telling you, your miracle, your healing is going to happen based on your obedience this morning.
hear me say this. The greatest gift that ever happened happened last week. I told, I told Pastor Arnold this. That young man played football as a high school player. He was in the barbershop this morning and his story has hit ESPN. There are thousands of people who play high school, college, and pro football whose stories never hit ESPN. See, what sometimes looks like a battered and bruised box is really one of the best gifts you can ever have. Knoxville's situation got national publicity. The mayor used to know about it, but now the president's talking about it. And you hear me say this, OBC, you have been positioned so that we are about to supernaturally quickly hit the world with the power of God in this implanted word. Now this is my last call. This is probably most important because there are some of you who were soldiers in this city and you've you found yourself weary. You've forgotten the power of the word of God. And you got weary in well-doing, but today God, he performed the word in you because the Bible says they that wait on the Lord, he'll renew their strength. They might have walked in with clipped off wings, but they're going to mount up with wings like eagles. I know the devil told you your time for working is over, but here you're going to run and not be weary. <laughs> and you're going to walk and not faint. What used to take you out ain't going to take you out. I'm telling you, come on up here because they need to know that the wall is full of soldiers that were ready to take over. Somebody shout, take over. This is a takeover. says that God was about to take the children of Israel into the promised land and he said don't worry about the giants that are there because you ain't gonna have to fight them they had had to fight in the wilderness but he said when you get to the promised land there will be no fight but the greatest giants that they had to deal with we're in the promised land. And God said, because you fought in the wilderness, when you get to your big giants, you won't have to fight. Some of you have been fighting all year long. And your greatest giant is in front of you, but God says, this time you ain't going to have to fight. That's what I hear in my spirit. Your fight is over. Your fight is over. He said, you ain't going to have to fight. But there is one thing you're going to have to do. He says, I want you to walk around that city six times. He says, and on the seventh day, I want you to walk around the city seven times. And when you get around that last lap, I want you to shout. And the Bible says they walked around six times. And when you're walking around the same place, it feels like you ain't getting nowhere in life. 
But they were being obedient, even if it felt like they weren't getting anywhere. And the Bible says when they got around that seventh lap, they took a deep breath and they shouted. And the Bible says when they shouted, walls started falling down. This is what I want y'all to do for me. I don't want you to think about you right now. I want you to think about the walls that have been surrounding our cities. The walls that have kept us separated from our children, kept us separated in neighborhoods, east side, west side, walls that have separated us in reg regards to ethnicity and culture, walls that have separated us financially. And I, I want you to shout because when you shout this last shout, Every wall that has been keeping us from walking into what God wanted us to walk in, it's got to fall. Tell somebody beside you, my walls are about to fall. Tell somebody else beside you, my walls are about to fall. Tell one more person, Knoxville's walls are about to fall. If you believe that, for the next 15 seconds, take a deep breath, open up your mouth, As a victory cry over our circumstances, over Satan, and over ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that our walls are falling down. Financial walls that have kept us from walking in prosperity have fallen down. Physical walls that have kept us from walking in healing have fallen down. Relationship walls that have kept us from being with who you wanted us to be with are falling down. Thank you, Jesus, that you're turning things around. We bless your holy name. There is none like you. It is so. So it is in Jesus' name. Amen.